By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to the finals of the Staples Tournament. We're finally here and this is so exciting. So um, just a little reminder, the Staples Tournament is all about banning the Staples and playing without them. So that's why it's called Staples. And uh, this is a format designed by the Hanseatic Old School Crew, a German old school group based in Hamburg. And if you want to know more about uh, the banned list, there's a link in the description below to that list. And also if you want to know more about the uh, old school group, there's also a link to their um, Facebook group in the description below. So all the information is in the description below. Now here in the finals, we've got two beautiful decks. We have Ishan who's playing with Jacques and Rubinha at the Valley. That's the name of his deck. And he's taking on Rob and Rob is playing a deck called Red Ruby. But don't let that name fool you. It's actually not completely red. There are also other colors in there, but more about that in the deck deck section. Now, before I jump into the deck deck section, first, a quick word from our sponsor, 3 for 1 Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros have fun ordering those cards and thank you 341 trading for sponsoring this video okay and we are back and ready to dive into the deck text let's start with the deck of the player on the left that is ishan let's take a look at his deck rubinha at the valley and here we see the deck of ishan so jacques and rubinha at the valley and this is really a steel deck so i'm first going to kind of focus on that strategy there are a few more strategies in here it's not just stealing creatures but i feel that that's a big part of the deck so um, at the heart of that strategy is Rubinia Soul Singer. Uh, that's a 2-3 creature from Legends, a legendary creature for 2, a green, a white, and a blue. It's actually a creature fairy. And uh, it reads, you may choose not to untap Rubinia Soul Singer during your untap step. And you can tap her and then gain control of target creature for as long as you control Rubinia. And Rubinia remains tapped. So you can just steal a creature of your opponent. It's pretty clear. Uh, the nice thing is he's also playing with Diamond Valley. And Diamond Valley is a land from Arabian Nights. You can tap the Diamond Valley to sack target creature and gain life equal to the toughness. Now, if you, of course, steal the creature of your opponent, you can then sack it to the Diamond Valley. Next turn, untap your Rubinia again and do it all over again. Kind of put all your opponent's creatures through the meat grinder and gaining life um, in that process as well. So it's pretty good, that combination of Rubinia, Soul Singer, Diamond Valley. And then he's also playing with Disharmony. And Disharmony is um, a card from Legends. We're actually seeing a lot of Disharmonies in this Staples tournament. It's one red and two for an instant. And it reads, target attacking creature comes under your control untapped. Return to former controller at the end of turn. This creature is no longer considered to have attacked. Play before the defense is chosen. So the cool thing about this harmony is you can steal a creature of your opponent when he attacks with it. And then block a creature of your opponent. And after that also a second to the diamond valley. So you can just get a lot of value out of a creature with this harmony. So this is really a big part of the strategy. Then another part of the strategy is kind of revolves around Jacques Levert. So Jacques Levert is uh, a legendary creature, human warrior, and it reads green creatures you control get plus O plus two. So this goes together quite well with some of the creatures in this deck, especially with um, the If Biff Afrit. So If Biff Afrit is a 3-3 three, three flying creature. So if you have Jacques Levert, it becomes a 3-5 flying creature. And it is basically a hurricane on a stick. You can pay a green and then you can deal one damage to each player and also each creature with flying. Now the interesting thing is anybody can activate this ability, so also your opponent. So if your opponent has green mana, they can also use this ability to, for example, kill the If Biff Afrit. But then, of course, you do need enough green. And if you have the Jacques Levert on the board, your If Biff is now a 3-5 instead of a 3-3. So that really adds up. Um, I think those are kind of the main, the main strategies. I love the fact that he's playing a Lurker, by the way. I think it's such a cool card. You, you never see that card. So Lurker is a 2-3 creature beast. That reads, Lurker can be the target of spells unless it attacked or blocked this turn. So it's really hard to destroy a Lurker. And Lurker, of course, a 2-3, but when you have Jacques Levert, it becomes a 2-5. So it's a pretty good blocker as well. It's just really nice to see Lurker. I really li like that art. Um, there are just a lot of other really cool cards in here, but I think 
by discussing the the stealing of the creatures and the Jacques Le Ver uh, boosting of creatures. I think we kind of discussed the main strategies uh, of the deck here. What I also like, by the way, just the last thing is the uh, pyrotechnics. Pyrotechnics in combination with If Biff and Fried can be quite good in general. I think pyrotechnics has been an all-star in this tournament. You just get so much value. Yes, it's expensive, but Staples is slower anyway. Um, let's have a look, by the way, and see if Rob is also playing with pyrotechnics because he's playing with a lot of red cards. Let's take a look at Rob's red ruby deck. And here we see the deck of Rob Red Ruby. And oh my, there's so much happening in this, in this deck. I don't know where to start, but I'm gonna give it a try. Um, as you can see, it's dominantly red. There's a little bit of green and a little bit of black. There are actually no black cards in there, but you need black mana to cast those legendary creatures. Maybe it's nice to start with those legendary creatures. We see Adun Oakenshield, a one, two creature for one green, one black, one red. You can pay a green, a black and a red, tap it, Take target creature from your graveyard, put it into your hand. Now this card works together really well with the playset of Bull Lightnings. So Bull Lightning is three red for a six one creature with haste. You can attack with it, the turn it comes into play. It also has trample. So if you time this right, it's like a double lightning bolt. You can deal six to your opponent. Uh, but at the end of the turn, it destroys itself. So it's only there just as a lightning bolt, a super big lightning bolt. Uh, the cool thing is it destroys itself. It goes into the graveyard and then you've got Adun Oakenshield. You can get it back. Another really cool thing is that he's also playing with Safe Haven. So Safe Haven is a land from the dark, two and tap, put target creature into the Safe Haven, so exile it from the game. When you sack Safe Haven during your upkeep, that creature comes back into play. So again, you can use Safe Haven in combination with your Bull Lightning. So again, there's a lot happening in this deck because this is not just the only things that are happening. But anyway, let's just check out the other golden creatures in this deck. So we've got Xira, three of those. It's a one, two flying creature for one green, one red, one black. So you also need those mana. Um, and then, as I said, it's flying, but it also has an ability. You can pay a green, a red, and a black and tap it, and you can draw a card. So it's like a cheap GM day tome. However, you do need those three specific colors of mana. And also it's a creature, so it's very vulnerable. But if you can get this creature to stick, it's super cool. But it, because it can give you cheap cards to draw and it can be it can be a game decider, to be honest. I mean, that card advantage is a really big thing. And then when we're looking at the rest of the deck, we see some other really cool creatures. What do you think about Edwin Afrit, a full playset of those? It's a 3-6 Arabian Nights creature that cannot block. If it wants to block, you have to flip a coin. If you win to flip, it blocks. If it doesn't, it taps itself and doesn't block. So that's pretty bad, but you can attack with it. And it's a three six for three mana. So just for three red mana, you've got three offense, six defense. That's insane stats for just three, especially in old school. Um, and then you also have the beautiful dragon whelps here, two, three flyer that you can pump plus uh, one plus zero, and you can make it five max. You could make it more, but then it destroys itself at the end of the turn. And then next to the dragon whelp, we've got three really good cards and three cards that I think could be super good in this matchup. We've got three disharmonies. Disharmony, one red and two for an instant from a legends. So you can play this when your opponent is attacking and then you can gain control of target attacking creature. It untaps and you can use it on your side of the board. So you can use it as a blocker. So let's say your opponent is attacking with um, a 9-9 Colossus of Sardia and an 8-8 Force of Nature. Let's make this a really cool combat step. You can play your um, Disharmony Take, uh, take control of the Colossus of Sardia, kill the Force of Nature by blocking it, and then you've got a 9-9 that you can actually sack to Diamond Valley to gain 9 life. So can you imagine pulling off that play? That means it's like um, a 3 for 1, right? Like you have a 2 for 1, but you're also gaining the 9 life. It's insane value. It's, it's sick, and, and that can be done with this deck, and that's what I think is, is just really, really cool. What we also see in this deck are a few other tricks. For example, Taunus's Coffin together with Inferno. Inferno is an instant from the dark that deals six damage to all players and all creatures. So it's basically like it wipes the board usually, right? Unless you've got insanely big creatures that maybe we're gonna see in this matchup. But we've got Inferno, deals six to everything. And then, of course, before you cast Inferno, or, or, or in response to your own cast of Inferno, you can put your favorite creature into the coffin so it's protected from the damage, and then the next turn you can untap the Taunus' coffin and the creature comes back out. What you could also do is just play a Shatterstorm, and then you destroy your own coffin, yes, but you also destroy the artifacts of your opponent. And what happens with the creature that's in the coffin when the coffin gets destroyed? 
Well, the cool thing is the creature comes back. It does come back into play tap though, so Taunus' Coffin doesn't work with Bull Lightning, unfortunately. Um, now, there are two other cards I'd like to highlight, and then I think we've discussed you know, the, the biggest part of this deck, uh, and those are the two Tranquilities. Maybe you're wondering, why would you splash green just for those two Tranquilities? You have to remember, we're playing Stapeless. A lot of cards are banned in this format. One of those cards uh, is Disenchant. That means that Enchantment Removal is is difficult you know and i kind of like that because it means you've got space to play enchant creatures and to play goofy enchantments um but that also makes a card like tranquility better tranquility is sorcery one green and two destroys all enchantments so tranquility is quite nice okay we have discussed the deck of rob we've already talked about the deck of ishan so that only means one thing ladies and gentlemen Get ready, because we are about to start with the finals of the Stapeless 2024 tournament. Let's go! Game number one of the finals of the Stapeless tournament is on its way. We have Rob sitting on the right with his deck Red Ruby, and Ishan sitting on the left with his deck Jacques and Rubinha at the Valley. He's on the play here, starting with a Bayou, and now we see Rob also kicking it off with a dual land, playing a Taiga and a pass turn. So again, we have the situation where the decks are not super fast. So the first couple of turns, we're not going to see too much happening. There were very aggressive decks, by the way, in the Stapleist format, if you're wondering. There is a website where you can see all the deck photos. I've put a link in the description below. Here we see Rob playing a second Taiga. But I think just the value of these mid-range and slower decks is just too good. And that's uh, what got them in the finals here. So there we see Ishan tapping out, and there's a Lurker. Okay, I love this. <laughs> a Lurker, a 2-3 creature from the dark. And uh, it can only be targeted during uh, the, uh, the combat step. So if you use it as a blocker or as an attacker. I wonder if Rob knows, I I'm sure he knows the card, but I mean, you never play against the card. So what I usually do is then I read it again, just to make sure that I know what the card does. And I love the art of Lurker, by the way. I believe it's Anson Maddox art. Here we see Rob tapping out. Ooh, there's an Edwin Efreet, also three, but a little bit bigger. It's a three, six. And uh, if it wants to block, you have to flip a coin. If you lose the flip, it doesn't block, it taps itself, but who cares? It's great for attack. And that's probably what Rob's going to do next turn. Unless, of course, Ishan can find an answer here. I mean, I believe like Rubinia's Soul Singer is a little bit too costly to cast yet. Also, he doesn't have blue. And I think Jacques Lever is five. Anyway, passing the turn here back to Rob. With only the Lurker as a potential blocker, but that would be a chump. I don't think he's going to do that. So I'm expecting Rob to attack here with his Itwin. There is a Diamond Valley. Okay, so both players playing with Diamond Valleys, by the way. Diamond Valley has really been a super good card in, uh, in the Stapleist format. Ooh, it looks like he's taking it back, though. Nope, he's not. Okay, leaving it on the battlefield. Really taking his time. Remember, it is the finals, of course. You want to think about your moves. Oh, there's a Bull Lightning. Ho, oh, oh, ho, going in there. Now, it could be worth it for, for Ishan to just put his Lurker in front of the Bull Lightning. Remember, Lurker has three toughness, so then you would only take three damage instead of six, and of course, three from the Edwin. But I mean, taking nine this early in the game, probably not the best. A nice uh, note here is that uh, Rob now has that combo between Bull Lightning and uh, Diamond Valley. It's kind of funny. It only gives you one life, though, but still, what you can do is after combat, exactly what he does right now is sec the Bull Lightning to the Diamond Valley, then at least get a little bit of value. Remember, Bull Lightning uh, destroys itself at the end of the turn. And look at that, no blocks right by Under. So he's taking the full nine. Wow, that hurts. That really hurts. So he's on 11. This is a really bad start for Ishan here. On the back foot already. So I'm kind of expecting him then to attack now with the Lurker. So there's another duel, the Bayou exactly swinging in, or else you would have blocked, right? So you've made the decision not to block, so might as well just attack for two. So put Rob on 19 and just a pass. Oh, this is so bad. 
It is looking so bad for Ishan. Ay, 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 ay. And there we see a city of brass. He's going to tap three. Another bull lightning. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, two bull lightnings equals 12 damage. That's insane. Very bad luck here for Ishan. But, yeah, bull lightning can be a fantastic card, of course. And remember, Rob is playing with uh, four bull lightnings in his deck. Yeah, and despite the fact that he's playing a lot of different colors, uh, it's mainly red. So almost all his lands can, uh, can also make a red. The duels, the city of brass, of course, the hammerheim. Are we going to see a diamond valley there by Ishan? Yeah. So one of the things he can do next turn is if Rob attacks, block with the lurker before damage is dealt, but after blockers are declared, sack it to the valley, gain three life, go up to five. But yeah, this is a really tough spot for Ishan, having to deal with the double bull lightning. There's the attack, yeah. Has to block here, else he's dead. He, he is playing, I believe, with, with a Disharmony, so... Disharmony could be a way out as well. Could play Disharmony, steal the Idwin, sack it to the valley. That would be a pretty good play, actually. Ooh, are we going to see that? Yes, Disharmony! Ho, ho, ho! This finals is full of fireworks! Wow, yeah, this is a perfect moment here. Now he gets the id win at 3-6, can sack it to his Diamond Valley, gain 6 life. Ooh, in response, of course, Rob's going to sack it. Yeah, that's a good move. That's a really good move by Rob here. Sacking it, going to go up to 26. Wanted to play the Xeed, I changed his mind. Oh, going for Edun Oakenshield. Wow, that is such a good card. Looking at the graveyard now of Rob. He's got two Bull Lightnings and an id win in there. Ay, 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 ay. So Ishan kind of had a good move with the disharmony, but it looks like it's not enough. But it did buy him some time. So maybe if he can get, for example, a Rubinia Soul Singer, that would be quite good. He can start stealing some creatures, but he doesn't have blue mana to cast it, though. So that's unfortunate. He's really in the tank here, trying to figure out what to do. He's on two life. There's a plateau. Yeah, and I have to say, I've seen so many Dexter at the Staples tournament that really need all the duels to kind of play out all the wanky, uh, the janky stuff. Tapping six. What are we going to see for six? Ooh, there's a Desert Twister. Wow, on the Edun Oaken Shield. That is really good. I believe it's playing with two Desert Twisters. And actually not attacking with the Lurker. That really surprises me. On the other hand, two damage doesn't make a difference. And as soon as it attacks, it's vulnerable. Here we see a Dragon Whelp. So another problem here for Ishan. That's the thing. When you're on two, you're with your back against the wall. And everything your opponent casts all of a sudden becomes this huge life-threatening problem that you have to deal with. And the question is, how many answers do you have? So you have to kind of try to come up with a long-term solution. But you can't really do that when you're on two life. You just have to deal with one threat at a time in order to survive. Playing a City of Brass here. So now he's got blue mana, but I mean, if you play Rubinia, you go to one. You don't want to do that, and then you die to the whelp the next turn. Even with the Diamond Valley, wouldn't be enough. So Ishan tapping, untapping again. I mean, Pyrotechnics will be quite nice. He could kill the whelp. Of course, in response, Rob's probably going to eat it to the valley, but still, then that's gone. Then you can attack with your lurker. But he probably doesn't have a pyrotechnics in hand, or else he would have played it out already. That's kind of a no-brainer move. So 
probably has a, a complex set of options to go through and, and none of them may be good enough to survive here. He's on two. Passing the turn. Ay, 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 ay. Maybe he's got another disharmony. That's possible, of course. There's the attack. Yeah, Rob doesn't have to think much. It's pretty easy. Put those creatures sideways and hope for the best. Tapping three, another disharmony. So you're just going to eat it again. Going to go up to 29. Oh, he's actually going to put it in his safe haven. Of course, he's got that card as well. A card from the dark. I'm really enjoying this match. I mean, we're seeing super cool cards being played. Aiden Oakenshield, Xida, Lurker, Disharmonies, Safe Havens. I mean, this is such a fun game to look at. So the Dragon Whelp is now in the Safe Haven. How the Safe Haven works, during your upkeep, you can sack the Safe Haven, and then the creatures come back into play untapped, but with Summoning Sickness. So you cannot attack with them, but the creature comes back. And remember, the Xida, by the way, has flying a 1-2 flyer. So now you have the weird situation where actually Rob can also decide to just attack with the Xida. First, the attack here by uh, the Lurker, by Ishan. And he's going to tap a little bit more. What are we going to see for 6? Oh, Force of Nature, 8-8 eight, eight Powerhouse. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. Playing with the single force of nature. So he found that force. That's, of course, also a great creature to sack to the Diamond Valley if need be. And here we see Rob sacking his save haven. So the Dragon Whelp is getting back into the game. Now, remember, it does have summoning sickness, I believe. So he cannot attack with it this turn. Now the question is, if you're Rob, are you going to attack with the Xira? Oh, this is difficult. There's the Tonus' coffin. This is an interesting moment. Attacking with the Xira. Oh, what a game this is. I'm going to put Ishan on one. Going to pass the turn. And I believe the coffin is three to activate, by the way. So I don't think he's got enough mana to use the coffin at the moment. But I mean, he's really high. He's on 23, so he could take a hit of 8. I think if you're Ishan, now he has to choose, am I going to sack it to the Diamond Valley and not pay the upkeep cost? Or am I going to pay the upkeep cost, swing with it, maybe sack it later? Yeah, he is going to pay the upkeep cost, so the 4 green. And then he's going to draw a card. And I, th I think if you're Ishan, it's, it's pretty simple what you have to do here, right? Just swing in with both creatures. Well, not with the Lurker because it's 2-3. Cannot kill the Whelp. But attack with the Force. 8-8. Eight, eight. It cannot block the Flyers anyway. And then hopefully deal some damage through Rob. Put him on 15. Then next turn, eat up your own Force. Or do it now, because if you eat up later, then Rob in response can put it in the coffin. So I think you would have to do it this turn. First attack, that's step number one. Ooh, the coffin is two to activate, not three. So he is going to use the Diamond Valley in response. And for some reason, I thought the coffin was three to uh, activate, but it's only two. I've played with the coffin uh, quite a lot myself, so I should know better, I guess. Passing the turn here back to Rob. There's the attack. It's going to pump it up to six. That's it. Yep, yep, yep. It's going to pump it up to eight, I mean. So, yep, that's enough here to, uh, to win for a moment. There. I thought Ishan was going to do something, but it wasn't enough. But what an entertaining first game. I'm really loving these decks. Now both uh, players are going to dive into their sideboards and we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's uh, Ishan on the plate, starting with a Bayou passing the turn. Look at that Rob slapping down the mountain. Pass, 
Looks like Ishan took a mulligan, perhaps, because he's got now five, six in hand, I believe, after the draw. There is a tropical island and a pass. Rob finding another mountain. So again, kind of the slow starts uh, that you would expect. There's a Badlands. So almost has all the colors that he needs. There's a mountain. There we go. Three red, or it's going to be an Itwin or a Bull Lightning. It's an Itwin or Freet. Three six. I mean, this deck of Rob is so good. When he hits the three red, you start to really panic as an opponent. Because you don't want to see a Bull Lightning that's six damage, but you don't want to see an it win a free because it's a three six. It's so hard to get rid of that creature. There's a Savannah. And I think what Ishan really needs this game is that Rubinia Soul Singer. Gonna tap down four. There's Jacques Levert. So this is a three two creature that gives green creatures plus O plus two. So it's a three four. That means it can block the it win a free, which is quite nice. And passing the turn here to Rob. There's a Taiga tapping four. What are we going to see for four? There's a Dragon Whelp. So Dragon Whelp, of course, flies over Jacques Levert. So, I mean, Rob actually has very powerful creatures in his deck because Dragon Whelp is also kind of annoying to deal with. It's a 2 3 flyer that you can pump up. You can give it plus one, plus oh for a red. You can pump three red into it, making it a 5-3. You can put more red into it, making it even bigger, but then it destroys itself at the end of the turn. And, and that's actually a good ability in some circumstances. For example, when your opponent wants to play a control magic on the Dragon Whelp, you can uh, self-destruct. There's the pass. So nothing here from Ishan. There's a safe haven from Rob. Now, of course, he can start swinging in with the Dragon Whelp. There's the attack. Are we going to see a disharmony? That's the question. He is going to tap the Badlands, it seems, or not. I mean, you could first wait if Rob's going to pump it up or not. There's the Disharmony. So he's going to take over the creature, meaning he's not going to take any damage, but he doesn't have a sec outlet, unfortunately, for, uh, for Ishan. I mean, this would, would have been perfect if, if he would have had a Diamond Valley on board. He could have stolen the Whelp, sack it to the Valley, gained three life, but doesn't have that. At least now it's uh, like a fog, in a way. Make sure that he doesn't take the damage from the Whelp. So he's still on 20, taking his turn, untap, upkeep, and then to the draw step. Remember the previous turn, he just passed turn, which is not great. And what you see here, by the way, is that uh, Rob, of course, knows now about the disharmony, so he's probably not going to attack with two creatures anymore. Unless, of course, he's got a, a solution to a, a potential disharmony. There's a tap of four. There's an if biff if free three three flyer from Arabian Nights. You can pay one green to deal one damage to each flying creature. And with that uh, Jacques Levert, it's now a three five, by the way. So this is quite good for Ishan. Next turn, you could pay three green, kill the whelp, and the if biff stays alive thanks to the, the bonus from the Jacques Levert. Ooh, there's a Taiga. There's the attack, so offering the trade. Can, of course, pump the whelp to five. And now Ishan has to make a decision. Do, do, uh, does he want to do that, yes or no? And he is taking the trade here. And I think that's actually a good decision. Ooh, putting it here in the safe haven. I'm not sure if this works, to be honest. Because the damage is dealt and then it dies. So I don't think you can put it in the safe haven anymore. It does happen, though.
Let me know in the comments below if it's possible or not. Here we see a greater realm of preservation. So that can prevent damage from a red source and a black source. So this is quite good for Ishan. And the way this works, by the way, with rules is a lot of people ask about question, rules questions, which is good. I mean, please continue asking them in the comments below. Um, I'm not a judge, of course, uh, but I can try to find out or other people can help. Um, but the way it works is both players need to agree and then it's fine. Here we see, by the way, Rob sacking the safe haven. It comes back into play. And with fine, I mean, I don't mean it's the correct thing to do, but it's up to the players really in these matches to kind of sort these things out. So in this case, I would have, and maybe they did because we don't have the audio, I would have really tried to find out, okay, how does this interaction actually work with the safe haven and that whole damage step in combat. Anyway, the situation now uh, is that the Dragon Whelp is back and the Xida Adian is being played out by Rob and then the pass turn to Ishan. And I think for Ishan, this uh, greater realm of preservation is really important. That gives him some air to kind of think about what he wants to do, takes the pressure off. He is, of course, still on 20, so is Rob, so we could be in for a long game. I think if you're Ishan, the biggest problem on the side of Rob right now is that Xira. And if you're Rob, of course, the greater realm of preservation is a real problem. And Rob is playing with Tranquilities, I believe. There's a City of Brass. And of course, with the Xira, he can kind of start digging for that Tranquility. He's playing with two, I think, in his, uh, in his deck. There's the attack with the whelp. Can simply prevent the damage here with the greater realm, I believe. It's one white and one to activate. An enchantment from legends. Looks like he's gonna pump it up and then in response, Ishan's gonna use a greater realm. Or not. Yes, he has done the past turn, untap, upkeep, draw. So I guess Rob wants to use Ixida in the uh, end step here of Ishan. So Ishan with four cards in hand, having lots of lands. Rubinia Soul Singer would be quite nice on this board. He could steal the Ixida and start using it for himself, but nope. It looks like he's just going to pass turn and step Rob activating the Xida and now untapping for turn. So drawing an extra card. Yeah, that's bad news for Ishan. Yes, the Greater Realm is fantastic, but if your opponent is drawing twice as many cards, you're probably still going to lose. Rob tapping four. Nope. Okay, tapping four red, it seems. Keeping the dual lands untapped. There's another Dragon Whelp. Now remember, Greater Realm is one white and one. So he's got two white uh, in his uh, mana base, Ishan. So if Rob has enough creatures, red creatures to attack with, then uh, Ishan cannot prevent all the damage anymore. So if he can find, for example, a third Dragon Whelp, then uh, it's already a problem. Tapping the Badlands, and oh, there's an Immolation on the Xira. Oh, that's a great way to get rid of the Xira. One of the cool things in Ishan's deck is that he's playing Sorcerer's Queen together with Immolation. Really cool. Oh, there's another Xira, though. That's unfortunate for Ishan. So the problem is now back on the table, but it is slowing Rob down, of course. Attacking with two Dragon Whelps. Forcing Ishan to kind of tap out here, almost. No, he's gonna go for Disharmony. Ooh, and I think he tapped his mana wrong. Oh no, he didn't have any, any red open anyway. Very unfortunate for Ishan that he just doesn't have that second red. Because then he could have pumped the Dragon Whelp to a 3-3, killed one of the two Dragon Whelps. That would have been ideal. I am a little bit surprised about this Disharmony play. 
because he has the mana, I believe, to use the Greater Realm twice. Could have just prevented the damage, keep this harmony for a better moment in the game. But maybe I'm missing something. And there's another duel. So many dual lands here. And there he's gonna tap five. Okay, there we see a Pyrotechnics. So that's, I guess it's gonna kill Dixita, right? And deal two damage to, to Rob. I mean, Dixita is the most important thing to get rid of. Exactly, Rob's gonna drop to 18. Does mean that Ishan is opening himself up to at least one hit by one of the Dragon Whelps. Only has enough mana to prevent one of the attacks with the Greater Realm. Ooh, there's a Fisher. This is a big moment for Rob Fishering, one of the mana, and of course, uh, Savannah. This is really painful for Ishan. It shows uh, how versatile the Fisher is. It's an instant, and you can target a creature or a land. So you have the options. I've also called it kind of the red disenchant because of those two modes. And this is big. This means he can attack with both of his whelps. And I think he's got enough mana to deal 10 points of damage. Wow. That is huge. But it looks like he's not going to do it though. He's going to do something else. Ooh, he's going to play pyrotechnics. Oh, this is really bad here for Ishan. There's the attack. This is 7 damage. He can pump it still. 10 points of damage here for Ishan. Gonna go from 20 all the way down to 10. Oh, 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 oh. This is a bad moment. Now Ishan does still have to play Toa, of course. So he can prevent two sources of red damage. I guess you want to do the Dragon Whelps. No, he's going to tap. What is he going to play out? Pyrotechnics of his own. Pyrotechnics really doing work here for both players. Taking care of the Whelp and dealing a damage to Rob. He's going to drop to 15. But Rob, of course, still has two creatures now to attack with. Untap, upkeep, draw a card for turn. Wow, look at the amount of cards in hand for Rob. That is pretty impressive. There's the attack. Yeah, probably just have to go for the Dragon Whelp. If he says, I'm not going to prevent, then he's going to pump the Whelp. So he's going to do the Dragon Whelp, prevent the damage. There's another it winner free. Ay, 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 ay. This is really bad for Ishan. Already one game down. We're in the finals. Is Rob going to be our winner of the Staples tournament with his deck, Red Ruby? I mean, it is a mighty powerful deck. I think one of the conclusions we can take here is that Diamond Valley is an all-star in this format. Here we see a Whirling Dervish, even though the Diamond Valley doesn't play a big role in this game, by the way. It did in that uh, first one. And many of the top decks uh, played Diamond Valley. So Whirling Dervish 1-1 Pro Black. It's not going to save Ishan here. What is that one card in his hand? If it's a Disharmony, for example, it can buy, can buy him another turn. Here we see the Safe Haven. There's the attack. And how cool is it, by the way, that we see a deck with Safe Haven in the finals? That's awesome. Going to pay a red, going to make the Dragon Whelp three. So it's nine damage on the board. Going to prevent two. Going to take three points of damage, drop to four. Oh, there's the Inferno. Inferno for the kill. Wow, what a way to end this tournament. Style points here for Rob. Winning it here with an Inferno. And annihilating Ishan 2-0, or 0-2, I should say. So he is our Staples winner. Oh man, and I really, really enjoyed this tournament. Here we can see the winning deck of Rob, Red Ruby, but also Ishan, the runner-up. You've made a beautiful deck. You've shown some beautiful magic here. That semifinals that you played was absolutely epic. Talking about that, if you haven't seen all the matches, please check out the playlist. 
because these matches were so incredibly cool to commentate on and also just to just to enjoy these cards that usually don't see a lot of play it was fantastic before you go please take a moment to uh, like share and comment on this uh, video all these things are free and really help the channel move forward and talking about moving forward you can also become a patron of the show like Ishan and Rob and then you can become a supporter of what I do and help me continue making this content for you um, you can become a patron by checking out patreon.com slash Timmy talks and the cool thing is if you become a patron one of the perks is that you get access to the Timmy talks discord and then you can also join into these tournaments because I actually organize these tournaments to thank the people that uh, that support me via patreon or channel membership so uh, yeah check it out patreon.com slash Timmy talks for all the information and uh, one of the other perks is that your name is uh, mentioned in the end scroll when you become a patron what end scroll this end scroll what shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het is, ik het is, somber gezien.